It's no big secret that there are people out there who do not like the Nintendo Switch dock, for a couple of really good reasons. Some people have scratched screens, others have talked about how it doesn't exactly ventilate heat very well, and more than anything, right now, it is the only way to get a video signal from your Switch to your TV. So if you want another option, what can you do? Obviously, break your dock and build something better. And in my case, I want to try something a little special and put it in a classic NES cart. To start, you're gonna have to break your dock. Now, it's worth noting that Nintendo really doesn't want you to open this thing, so there are a lot more steps to doing this than you would think. First, we have to take off this back plate, but to do that, you have to have a pretty esoteric screwdriver design called a Y0. Now, these aren't exactly common, so you're gonna have to buy one of these specifically or get it as part of something like an iFixit kit. After removing the back plate, you can see the inside working bits of the Switch dock which you can pry off pretty easily, but run into the issue that the ribbon cable and power indicator light are buried behind a second layer. So we're gonna have to remove that as well, which guess what, requires an entirely different screwdriver. Now at first glance, you might think you can use any small Phillips head screwdriver to do this, but some of the screws are actually recessed really deep. So you're gonna have to make sure you have one that also has the reach to get to them. Now after taking those out, we do need to temporarily unplug the power indicator light, which just takes a little pressure to pull out, while the ribbon cable is gonna need a little more finesse and is made much easier using a small prying tool. With the board disconnected and all the screws gone, you can easily remove that second layer, rehook everything up, and boom, we have freed the insides of the switch dock from the surprisingly kind of large comparison shell. So now that we have the board, all we have to do is open up the Zelda cart, which is actually a lot easier. All you need is a screwdriver that works with a 3.8 security screw, which is a pretty common design for most older electronics. Opening the card up, we get to see the core of the original Legend of Zelda, which is actually really interesting to compare to other NES carts because it's actually quite a bit larger with the inclusion of this battery and extra memory because it was one of the few NES games where you could actually save your data by pressing the reset and power button at the same time. So with the cart cleared out, all we need to do is get the dock's board inside of it and shit. Okay, so this is actually gonna take a bit more work because while the cart is big enough, a lot of the molding that was designed to keep the cart's insides in place are getting in the way. So we're gonna actually have to destroy this cart a little bit. Using a Dremel with the cutting attachment, we got rid of the central screw peg, and if you're me, you also scratch up the inside a little bit, and then you switch over to a sanding tool to even that out and get rid of the bottom molding which was used to hold the game board's pins in place. Kids, don't try this at home. Adults, if you're gonna try this, don't be dumb like me and actually wear protective eyewear. So, after cleaning away the burning and melting plastic, I love that smell in the morning, you smell it? we can now safely fit the board inside. We just need a way to secure it. There's a couple ways you could do this. One of the simplest that we went for is just using a square of mounting tape, just placing that on top of the HDMI port since that gives us a nice flat surface and putting it down inside of the cart, leaving a little room on one side for us to fit the USB-C ribbon cable. Now it is at this point that we realize that the USB-C port is just a little too thick for the cart's mouth to just stick out of it. So it's gonna have to hang a little bit outside and we chose to have it facing forward for easy access. After that, we can close up the cart. Now we did dremel away one of the screw pegs, so you only need two of them now, throw the third one away, and the two we have left are enough to make sure the cart closes nice and secure. So after doing all this, we actually have a completed design. Now we just have to see if it works. So when doing stuff like this, there's always the worry that while breaking things apart, we might have actually broken something beyond repair. So we're gonna go ahead and test this out right now. So you'll see we got this little USB-AC extension cable, so it's not just docking right into the cart like that. Plug it in, and... Success! Did you think it was gonna work? I did. I hoped it did. That's all that matters. Now, of course, this does lose the dock aspect of, well, the Nintendo Switch dock, turning it instead into a more portable breakout box. Now, if you want a more permanent fixture for a setup, you can, of course, create a little mount or stand for it like we've done right here. I also really recommend getting a stand designed for a tablet or the Switch so you can set it up side by side for a nice little display. And really, this is just one example for all the different things you could do once you figure out how to open up the dock and take apart all the important bits. You could even celebrate your love for Nintendo by putting it in a Sega Genesis.